Yeah, I would say, you know, what's important is our transformation plan is on track. If you look at, you know, our key initiatives, we've uh, achieved about 33 million of the 60 to 80 million that we've announced. Uh, number one, that we've expanded our Canadian medical business internationally. Uh, our medical business has grown well. We've had big announcements in the Netherlands and in Israel, made some important, you know, developments in biosynthetics and genetics. And, you know, the Canadian rec business, you know, we continue to work our progress there. So I think, you know, we just look at, the overall plan, we're doing quite well. And on track for positive, for, for profitability, first half next absolutely. year? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. You know, when we look at, you know, the progress that we've made quarter over quarter, we really built in our strengths from last quarter, and we're on track to hit our EBITDA target of being EBITDA neutral um, by the beginning of our fiscal 2023. What, what's the outlook in terms of market share in, in Canadian recreational and, and uh whether that will stabilize or improve again anytime soon? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, the question in Canadian Rec is, do you want to make money or do you want to chase a bunch of market share? Right now, it's a bit of an irrational market. We're only three years into it. And the reality is discount and particularly large format flower is really growing. And so we made the decision about a year ago not to chase that unprofitable volume. And we think it was smart. We're seeing many of our competitors adopt that same strategy. So in our premium brands, we're seeing growth particularly in our Whistler and San Raf formats, and we think that's the right thing. But the reality is having a globally diversified cannabis portfolio right now is the best approach, and we're seeing significant margin gains and overall performance internationally in medical, and that's really where you see a lot of the profitability. What moves your stock, Miguel? You know this more than, more than your fundamentals and your earnings. It's hope for decriminalization in the U.S. And there was some news this week which led all the stocks to go crazy a report that House Republicans are preparing a bill could come as soon as this week to decriminalize it effectively, remove it from the Substances Act. Is, is that something you're hearing about, you know about? Yeah, I mean, listen, I've spent 25 years working in the U.S. with the DEA, FDA, and ATF, and so I'm very keen and very in tune with what's happening in the U.S. I think, you know, what we've heard from the Biden administration pretty consistently is that it's going to be medical plus decriminalization. While I'm respectful of the recent development, I, I still don't think we're there yet. But the reality is when that happens, you're going to see companies that have a long history in medical and compliance having an advantage. I mean, us doing well in Germany, Israel, the U.K., the Netherlands, you know, that's all because of our long history with regulatory compliance. And so the work we do there and the reason that we do well in Israel and other places are the same reasons that we'll do well in the U.S. And so we're keeping an eye on it. The other thing I'll mention is I think if you look at our strategy, right now it looks pretty smart. Chasing, you know, those assets in the U.S., which now are down 60 to 70 percent, really wasn't the right thing to do, particularly since you can't have a structured deal. So we keep an eye on it. We're going to be ready when it happens. But again, having a strong, globally diversified cannabis business that makes money, and we think is the best approach. Which of those countries you mentioned, those European countries, are you most uh, optimistic and excited about? Well, Germany's, you know, a huge market, and we're number one in flour, and we're growing there in oil, and so that's a big market. We only see about a tenth of the adults, you know, in getting cannabis uh, there that we would see, say, in Canada. The Netherlands, we're wildly excited about. We announced this week we're, you know, partnered with only one of the ten licensees. That's projected to be as big as Canada as the second largest rec market, and we've done very well in Israel. And so I think, well, you know, when you look at the big economies, they're exciting. But also, I think when you look at places like the Netherlands and places like Israel, where you can really have outside performance at high, high margins, those are exciting to us as well. Mm -hmm.